20 Premier League clubs, but who are the best players from each club so far this season? I'll be analysing 20 players and why their performances make them the best. Beginning with Arsenal then, and I have chosen Bakayo Saka. He's dominating stat-wise for Arsenal, firstly with successful dribbles. He has 28, which is the most for Arsenal, also the most key passes with 25, plus the most accurate crosses with 19, and this is an important stat for Arteta. In his system, you see a lot of crosses going into the box, so this is something that he wants to see from Saka. Also something with Saka is that he's very versatile, and this is what I really like about him. He is a left-footed player, but he's been playing on the right, and this is where he's been playing really well. In his last six games, he's been able to score four goals and get two assists so he's in really good form at the moment so in their recent form being one of their better players he's become an important player for the team and for that reason that's why he's been their best player for Aston Villa I've not gone with the obvious choice which would be Jack Grealish but instead I've gone with the right back who came from Nottingham Forest in the summer Matty Cash he's settled in really well into the Premier League and into the Aston Villa team and defensively he's not just been one of the best for Aston Villa but in the Premier League 43 interceptions is the second most in the league as well as winning 42 tackles so he's contributed massively to the defensive improvement to Aston Villa. He's been aggressive with his tackling ability and he reads the game well, intercepting passes that could have previously led to a chance. Where he's also been impressive though is crosses into the penalty area. He's been able to complete 11 which ranks him 7th most in the Premier League. He's beginning to affect the attacking play more which is what I was waiting to see from Matty Cash so I think he's an underrated player in the team and he's becoming another Villa player that I'm a big fan of. Brighton now and there's no doubt with Brighton that is Tariq Lamptey. The 20 year old has took his chance of getting first team football really really well. He's got incredible pace and real danger when he's running with the ball. And this sort of trait can be really effective for teams now. We know how important fullbacks are. And to have someone of his quality with this pace really makes a difference for Brighton. It's almost like an Alfonso Davies with just how fast he is. He started off the season with three assists in his first three games, with two of them being penalties that he won. And this really came from something that he's particularly good at, and that's carrying the ball into the final third. I'm sure I remember with one of the penalties, it was simply him running into the penalty area and getting fouled. They've definitely missed his ability ability to make something happen out of nothing since he's been injured. I'm excited to have him back in this Brighton team but also just interested to see where his next move will be. Big clubs are interested in him and I think a move in the summer might be on. Just before the next if you could please like the video it's very much appreciated as it really helps the videos in getting found. And of course if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. For Chelsea I've gone with their midfielder who didn't actually start in the first game under Thomas Tuchel and that is Mason Mount. A lot of people talk about Mount like he's overrated but arguably when you look at the stats he has has been their best player. And you might be surprised with how high he ranks in a lot of stats for Chelsea. Successful dribbles with 24, that's the second most. Tackles won 43, only second to Kante on 50. As well as intercepting the ball 23 times, only Kante above him again. And then in terms of creating chances, he's way above anyone else in the team, 49 key passes. And second for the team is Reese James with 19. Finally, he's attempted the fourth most pressures in the league with 347. He affects so much of the play for Chelsea, a very high work rate. And I think he should be seen as one of the first names on the team sheet. I think he should be respected more, and especially when it comes to England, a player who presses as much as Mount is what's needed in the midfield for the national team. With what happened in the first game under the new manager, I'll definitely be interested to see how he fits into the team going forward because I think he should be. For Crystal Palace, I've gone with the new signing, Ebri Chiesa. His arrival in the Premier League was exciting, but of course we had to see how he would adapt to a new league. And from what we've seen so far, he looks like another player to join the championship who is settling in right away. And he's been able to continue his tradition of taking on players. 35 successful dribbles is the 11th most in the Premier League. He's been a good addition to Crystal Palace, adding much needed extra creativity alongside Wilfred Zahar. He scored a brilliant goal against Sheffield United, a solo run taking on players and then finishing well. So due to some exciting moments and adapting well to the Premier League, it's made him one of the standout players in this team for me. For Everton, I've gone with their striker, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Even with him not scoring since the start of December, he's been their best player in my opinion. And I am sort of basing it off the form he had at the start of the season. Up to now, he's been able to score 11 goals. So yes, the chances have been there, but he's had to finish them, and he's done that brilliantly. All of his goals have come from inside of the box, none of them being penalties either. Four-headed goals is the most in the league, which shows why the crossing from Digne or Rodriguez is effective. He is on a little bit of a goal drought right now, but I think a goal will come soon enough for him. Even with him not in the best of goal-scoring form, I think he's still their best player so far this season. For Fulham, I'm going with a player that I have 
I've mentioned quite a bit on my channel, and that is Anguissa. Now, in my Fulham video at the start of the season, Anguissa was a big part of that video, praising his performances in Spain, a defensive midfielder who was great at tackling the opposition, driving forward with the ball, and dribbling past players. But the question was always the same, could he do that in the Premier League? And yes, he's been so impressive, especially the dribbling aspect. He currently has the second most successful dribbles in the Premier League, and you've got to remember, that's for a central midfielder. He's been able to show how he drives forward with the ball, carrying the ball into the final third 34 times. Even carrying the ball in any direction, he ranks 25th in the league and the most for Fulham with over 4,200 yards. I could have easily picked Adamola Luckman, he's been really good and has impressed, but in my opinion, Anguissa just gets it and one thing that we have to think about, if Fulham go down, surely another team has to look to sign him. I believe he'd be a brilliant transfer target for many Premier League teams, so this will be an interesting one to keep an eye on. At Leeds United, I've picked their defensive midfielder, Calvin Phillips. In their team, Phillips is the tempo dictator. He's important to the team because they do commit a lot of players forward when they attack, so Calvin Phillips will always stay back and the team can rely on him to be there. And I think that's what you get with a player of this style, and especially Calvin Phillips, he does it well. He gets that reliability from his teammates. He's got good success rates for both accurate crosses and accurate long balls too, showing that yes, okay, he can play these long balls, he can play these crosses, but more often than not, they are accurate. So that proves his passing ability, the quality of it, and what he brings to the team. And by showcasing these qualities at the top level, he definitely becomes a candidate for the England squad. Of course, there's those defensive kind of midfielders that you look in there with Declan Rice and Jordan Henderson, but Calvin Phillips, surely he has to be in with a chance. Leicester City now then, and it's another English player, it's James Justin. This season, and well, at the end of last season too, after lockdown, he's become a regular starter in this Leicester City side. And rightfully so, to be fair, he's took the opportunity with Pereira being injured fantastically. And I'm sure that it's giving Brendan Rodgers a really tough time in making a choice of who to play at fullback. He's a fullback who can play on the left or the right and is comfortable on the ball, especially with the energy that he's got. Ricardo Pereira has proven himself over the past few seasons to be a great tackler of the ball. And James Justin has filled in really well in doing that. He's won 49 tackles this season and that is the most for Leicester City. He's shown real maturity and made himself a top player in this Leicester side, fighting near the top of the table. And with how versatile he is, even with other players coming back into the team, there seems to be a position that he can always play in. For example, if they're playing five at the back, I'm not sure if he's played there already, but I'm sure he can play at the wide centre-back role. James Justin needs really impressed me this season, and that's why I think he's been their best player. For Liverpool, I've gone with their summer signing, Diogo Jota. He's had a dream start to life at Liverpool, and that's until his injury came along anyway. He scored five in the league and has only played 500 minutes this season. Plus, he was also able to score a hat-trick in the Champions League against Atalanta. Where Liverpool have been struggling to score this year, it looks like they need Jota back in the team to get them some goals. And in all honesty, I think you could easily say Mo Salah has been the best, or that Fabinho has been the best. He's filled in well at centre-back, having to step in for all the injured centre-backs that they have, and he's put in some impressive performances. But a new signing coming into a team with a lot of pressure on you with high expectations, he was able to hit the ground running. So that's why I went a little different on this one and went with Diogo Jota. Moving on now then onto the Manchester clubs. Firstly, Manchester City, and I've gone with Ilkay Gundogan. What he's been able to do recently in terms of scoring goals has been sublime. Seven goals in his last eight games. He's been able to take up a central midfield role and he's been given the freedom to get higher up the pitch. The first goal against West Brom, he was running on the defensive line, looking to be on the end of a long ball from Jao Cancelo. It shows his drive to score goals now and he's doing well with putting them in the back of the net. He's almost adding what they missed in David Silva when he left. Gundogan is now adding those goals from the midfield. He's been their best player in my opinion. To go from a defensive midfield role to now showing his consistent goal scoring ability is quite something. I am really interested to see how this form continues and how many goals he'll have at the end of the season. For the other Manchester club at Manchester United, I didn't want to say Bruno Fernandes, so I've gone with Marcus Rashford. Yeah, the obvious choice, of course, is Bruno Fernandes, but I didn't want to say that. Everyone knows how good Bruno Fernandes is. Without him in the team, I don't think they play as well, so he probably is their best player. But Marcus Rashford's season is maybe going under the radar a little bit, scoring seven goals and getting seven assists so far in the Premier League. In all competitions, 15 goals and 10 assists, and that shows his good consistency in in any competition that he's playing in. The pass he played for Mason Greenwood against Liverpool was fantastic and he got a goal himself in that game too. So purely for him continuing his improvement season upon season, that's why I've gone with Marcus Rashford. I think he deserves a little bit more credit so I'll give it to him in this video. With Newcastle, there isn't too much praise to be had about them at the moment at all, but their goalkeeper Carl Darlow has probably shown the most quality this season. Coming in for Dubravka, he's been able to pull off some remarkable saves and maybe they haven't kept Newcastle in the game as such due to how many chances the opposition gets at them, but he's done well in keeping
cutting some of the shots out. If it wasn't for him, then a lot more of the shots that they're having against them could have gone in the back of the net. With him playing so well, it means that Dubravka will probably have a hard time finding his place back in the number one spot. In terms of outfield players and them putting in good performances, we might start to see this as St. Maximan comes back into the team. He'll add the flair that they need in the squad and he is their best outfield player. But for now, from what we've seen outfield, I think I'll stick with the goalkeeper, Carl Darlow. So then Sheffield United coming off the back of Newcastle, who haven't been too impressive and neither have Sheffield United this season. But one player that has stood out for them is David McGoldrick. And you could purely put this down to the fact of him scoring a few goals, which other players haven't. He's been able to score five goals and also get one assist and he's done it in a good fashion as well. He's scored two with his right foot, he's scored one with his left and has scored two headed goals as well. For a player that struggled throughout last season to score, it took him a long time to get his first goal. And also at 33 years of age, it does make it somewhat surprising that he is their standout player. If he was still fit and he would have played more, maybe I would have gone with Sander Berger. He is a player who really impresses me and I don't know if I can see him playing in the championship. Surely if they get relegated, which is looking very likely, then surely he would move on to another club and move in the summer. But of course, before we speak about a transfer, I would like him to get fully fit and get back into this team. At Southampton, I debated over this one for a little bit. I was going to say Che Adams, but I think I'll go with James Ward-Prowse. And this is due to how effective he's been in all departments for Southampton. The most key passes for Southampton, the most crosses for Southampton, and in fact the sixth most accurate crosses in the league. And what you get with Ward-Prowse, a huge bonus, is that he's a threat from set pieces. And it means that they're able to take advantage of the height that they have in their centre-backs. The delivery from Ward-Prowse means that they have a great chance of heading the ball at the goal from a corner. And free kicks from just outside the box are basically guaranteed goals at this point. And it is a huge bonus when someone can do this well. You can learn to take advantage of this to help the team win games. Southampton haven't been pressing as much this season, but Ward-Prowse has been the player to do it the most for the team, making him the best player for them so far this season, in my opinion. From Southampton, we move to Tottenham Hotspur, and you could go between two obvious players here, but I have gone for Harry Kane. Hyung min Son and Harry Kane both having brilliant seasons, but I do think Harry Kane gets it. I do still feel that we're not talking about the season that he's having as much as we should. 12 goals and 11 assists in the league so far. He's instrumental to how Mourinho wants Tottenham to play, using him as the focal point of everything when they're looking to attack. We knew he could score goals, but the passing and chance creation we've seen from him is something else. And of course, the partnership between him and Son goes without saying. He went three games without scoring or assisting, and you could see the effect it had on their results when he wasn't in good form. Well, good form. It was only three games, but you get what I'm saying. The results weren't as good. If Kane is playing well, then usually Tottenham aren't going to be losing. And for that reason, that is why he's their best player so far. At West Brom, once again, not a team full of fantastic performers, but one player that has been good is Mateus Pereira. We knew the type of player he was from his time at the Championship, a player with flair and dribbling ability, and so far this season, he's got 20 successful dribbles. His importance to West Brom is undeniable. He scored the most goals and got the most assists. He's the player in the side with a lot of energy, and he gives West Brom belief that they can actually go on to win games. Even though I think they will go down, I think he's a big reason as to why West Brom are still in with a chance of surviving. And with how Sam Allardyce sets up and wanting to play on the counter, I think Pereira is a good asset in the team for doing that. Another one of those players that you'd have to question, would they stay at West Brom if they got relegated? He is probably good enough to stay in the Premier League. We'll see if there's anything about that in the summer, but halfway through the season, I think he has been their best player. So at West Ham United, the player that I think has been the best is Thomas Suchek. What a year it's been for Thomas Suchek at West Ham, and what a signing it's been for them. The central midfielder is only getting better and is chipping in with goals throughout the season. Well, I say chipping in, he literally got two goals in one game in the most recent game that they played. From set pieces, he's a threat with his aerial ability, and overall, he's won the most aerial duels in the league with 119. We've seen West Ham spend big on players like Sebastian Haller, but Suchek for them is one of the best signings for a while, and he cost £15 million. His goals have played a big part in getting West Ham to where they are in the league right now, and I'm really picking him due to the impact that he's had all over the pitch for West Ham this season. I think he's really become a fan favourite, and come the end of the season, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets player of the season for West Ham. At Wolves, a team that aren't doing so well this season, I have gone with Pedro Neto. He's a player that I've been looking into recently, debating whether to do a full video on him, as he's really become an important player for them this season, scoring the most goals and getting the most assists. Now, he is more of a creative player who needs a goal scorer alongside him instead of someone who gets a lot of goals. He has 36 accurate crosses, which is the second most in the Premier League this season, as well as 38 key passes, and that's the fifth most in the league, proving that he does have a fantastic creative side to his game and his passing quality is there. I think it's quite obvious that Wolves are being hurt without Jimenez in the team, and with him in the team, I think Neto gets more assist, I'm sure of it. Neto's a fast player with great flair and skills, dribbling ability, he has it all really. And this 
this makes him an entertaining player that could find himself at a top six side in the Premier League. So be sure to leave your opinions in the comments. Who do you think is the best player from each Premier League club? I recommend that you don't miss out on future videos. Subscribe to Route 1 and like the video if you did enjoy.